Wait until you see what's underneath all this paint. I found this old painted dresser for $20 at a local thrift store. This isn't the first painted furniture piece that I found recently for the channel. There was the blue buffet, the yellow art deco dresser, another blue buffet, and the list goes on. So if you haven't seen those videos on the channel, be sure to check them out. In many ways, it's a very simple four drawer dresser or chest of drawers that was likely mass produced. The challenge for this project is to remove the blue paint from this dresser. And this video isn't about whether antique and vintage furniture should or shouldn't be painted, but rather accepting the challenge of trying to remove the paint and give this a finish like it would have been brand new in the 1930s or 1940s. This dresser appears to have been manufactured in Roanoke, Virginia, made specifically for Syker's Furniture Store in Madison, Wisconsin. The Sykers family-owned store has been around since the 1930s and is still in operation in the Madison area today. This waterfall-style dresser could have easily been part of the Art Deco era, specifically during the 1930s and 1940s, but is more likely part of the era following that, which was the streamline, modern style, where that era was shortly after the Art Deco and had less ornate designs and was more simplistic mass-produced and part of a streamlined design. The streamlined designs that we often see in the furniture from this era were heavily influenced by the aerodynamic and simplistic designs in the transportation industry from the same era. I'll be listing all of the products used in this video in the video description. I'll start by applying Clean Strip Premium Stripper in the 15 minute version. I'll apply this with a chip brush, leave this sit for about 30 minutes, come back and scrape this off with a plastic spatula. It's important to note that unless the previous owner who painted this dresser blue completely removed the old finishes, the old finishes are likely still intact underneath all this blue paint. For that reason, one application of paint stripper is likely not enough to remove both the paint finish and the old finishes on this dresser. All I'm looking to do with this first step is remove enough paint to understand the direction of the wood grain. I'll come back and scrape the rest of the finishes with the carbide scraper. Thank you to those who continue to show support by sending postcards in the mail and other items as well. Also thank you to the patrons for making this video possible. For as little as $5 a month, all patrons have access to additional content for the channel. I haven't mentioned the statistic on the channel for quite a while, but 72% of you still watching these videos haven't subscribed to the channel yet. So if you feel that I've earned your subscription, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss new content. I truly appreciate your support. With painted furniture projects like this one, I'm not too concerned about removing all of the paint in the first step. I'll remove the remainder of the paint and the old finishes with this two and a half inch carbide scraper. 
Now that I know the direction of the wood grain on the drawer fronts and the dresser top, I'll carefully scrape and remove most of the old finishes. Any parts of the finish that still remain after scraping this entire piece will just be sanded in the next step. For the sections of this dresser that are less delicate than the thin layers of veneer on the drawer fronts and the dresser top, I'll completely remove all the old finishes just using the carbide scraper. This helps cut down on wasting so much paint stripper on one single project. Not to mention, some of the cost of these goods has literally doubled since this time last year. To help put things in perspective, using a carbide scraper like this for an entire project can be labor intensive. However, it can be quicker and much cleaner than using any chemicals. The cost for a good quality carbide scraper that I use for most of my projects is about $25 on Amazon. And for the detailed scraper set, you can typically find a set for under $15. At the moment, the cost of one quart of paint stripper at the big box store is around $19, and this probably would not even be enough for this single project. Most of the waterfall designs are covered in a thin layer of veneer, so it's important to be very careful when scraping and sanding around the rounded edge. I've intentionally left the old finishes on the rounded edge. I'll have to sand this area carefully so I don't burn through the veneer. There are several different methods for removing old finishes from vintage and antique furniture like this, including dental tools. Using folded sandpaper discs was the most efficient way to remove the old finishes on this dresser. However, there were still some areas that required using the dental tools. Now that most of the old finishes have been removed, I'll use the orbital sander using 220 grit sandpaper to prep this for staining. If you're watching a video like this and you're wondering how I can spend this much time on one project and still flip furniture for a profit, it's important to note that I do earn revenue from my YouTube videos. So a project like this that requires this much time and effort, approximately 10 to 20 hours to finish appropriately, is not a good example of a project that would be worth flipping for a profit. My plan is to continue doing detailed projects like this for the channel. These projects have helped build the channel. However, I will be doing a new series very soon on the channel showing more of the behind the scenes of actual furniture flipping for a profit. So I hope to be able to answer more of your questions regarding the finances behind furniture flipping and what to look for in your local marketplace to be able to flip for a profit. Just before staining, I'll use a tack cloth to wipe off as much dust from this piece as possible. For this dresser, I'll be using a classic penetrating wood stain by Verithane. The color is early American. From the stock that I have, I thought this would be the most appropriate color for this dresser from this era. I'll apply this stain one section at a time with the foam brush. With the classic penetrating stain, this stain typically soaks into the wood grain much quicker, so I'll come back and wipe off this stain immediately. 
Gel stain typically sits on the surface of the wood and gives you more time before the stain soaks into the wood grain. I'll let this dresser completely dry overnight and in the morning I'll use a spray-on lacquer for the top coat. I chose a spray-on lacquer for this piece because of all the detailed areas. This is depth clear wood finish with a satin sheen. This will require several light coats. If I'm being honest, I wasn't completely in love with the hardware that came with this piece. However, I thought it was only right to keep the original hardware with the original dresser. These only required a little cleaning and they were ready to go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos you haven't seen. We don't have many nice days here before winter, so I thought I'd bring this piece out and show it in the natural light. In the process, the dresser got a little dusty and dirty, you'll see that in the final reveal but I think it was worth it.